Uh, thank you so much, Yalda. I'm so excited to have Greg start us off. Good morning, everyone. It's like a beach. It's a little bit humid, right? We're feeling good this morning. Wait, Greg, we beach. Uh, we beach, yes. <laughs> How many of you watched Romper Room when you were growing up? So I feel a little bit like Romper Room right now because I'm looking in the audience and I feel like I should be calling out names because you are writers, you are policy makers, you are good people doing good things in the world and we are so grateful to be in this space. And this morning, I get to turn the tables a little bit because just like pretty much everyone in this audience, sometimes you're the one on the panel. And in fact, just yesterday morning, I had a chance to be on a panel. I was the one being questioned at a public media conference, and I got a chance to talk about Mr. Rogers. And the book that I co-authored represents Mr. Rogers as a learning scientist and as one who is decades ahead of his time. And this morning, I get to talk to real life learning scientists who in their own way are like Mr. Rogers. So. That's I a need, compliment, thank and you. And absolutely, someday we'll talk about <laughs> Kathy's and Roberta's and Lisa's the way we talk about Fred's, right? Mm. <laughs> so I want you to ground me and ground everyone else. Why are we here? What is this thing called LSX? <laughs> okay, and why are we wearing these crazy glasses? So for those who are online, hello um, and welcome. For everyone in the room, yay, I'm so excited that you're here. And, and I'm Lisa Guernsey, I'm, I'm the director of the LSX program with these amazing co-founders, Kathy and Roberta. And we have kind of come up with a, a crazy thing. It's been going for about six years now. We don't always wear multicolored glasses, but today we are, and everybody who's here in person with us has a pair of these. And if you didn't get them when you walked in, you can go pick them up. The colors correspond to the sectors of innovation that we are bringing together in this program. So Greg, we are very grateful to you for asking this crazy question because we all, today is gonna be all about answering this. Like, what are we doing? But just for those who may not know much about this program, which is here in the Ed Policy Program at New America, but also we connect with Temple University and University of Delaware and many others. We bring together folks who are in the journalism realm, so represented today by this kind of pink ruby color. Um, and I came from the world of journalism as an ed tech reporter. We also bring together scientists in the, and do, do research on child development and behavioral um, and cognitive science, that's blue. Go and blue. that's blue. Go blue. Go blue. Yeah. And we have folks who are um, social impact entrepreneurs who have built nonprofits and other really cool initiatives. And I think they're yellow. Uh, we'll see some yellow folks out there today. We have those who are education leaders who are running systems of education, who are in the policy realm, who are running schools, who are running professional development programs. Um, and they're in orange today. And I think, is that everybody, or have I forgotten some? Green, 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 oh, green, entertainment, green, 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 of course, green, everything Yalda just yeah, talked yeah. about. Um, and huge thank you to Yalda, who was a mentor for, to this program from the very beginning. Yalda, thank you. Great um, way to kind of get us started. So everybody in green today is in the entertainment sector, and that includes <laughs> app makers, media makers, storytellers, um, children's book authors, everybody. So that's us. Yep. And Kathy and Roberta, if I understand correctly, this work got underway too because we felt, you felt, like we weren't talking about the science of learning in plain ways. We weren't communicating it more broadly. We were falling flat. So can you talk a little bit about that? So uh, I would say that we're here because we're rising up against the marketplace, which was offering potty chairs with laptops attached to them <laughs> and telling parents that this is what they needed. When there's so much rich information about human development for us to share. And Kathy and I tried to share it at the Ultimate Black Party in 2010 in Central Park, but it was a one day activity. But it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we had fun. We did have fun. And we did attract 50,000 people, if you can believe it. But we wanted something more enduring, something that parents and teachers and practitioners could turn to for the long haul to get the best information about human development that was out there. And this was our way with <laughs> Lisa to, and the Jacobs Foundation, thank you very much to them, uh, to bring out what we knew 
about child development and families to help all those people who fall into that category, and that's quite a lot. <laughs> and I'll just add that we kind of had an idea. It was like a light bulb went off, right? And we're thinking that all these people in different sectors are kind of working on the same thing, but nobody's talking to each other. So the people who were in journalism rarely, unless they were doing a story on that precise thing, or talk to the Lisa Guernsey. <laughs> uh, talk to the people who were doing the science, who rarely talked to the people who were doing the policy, who rarely talked to the people who were developing hundreds of thousands of apps that were supposed to be educational apps. And we thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be amazing if these people had a forum where they could generate ideas together? And I must say, since the beginning of this, you, all of you here, have made this program what it is. Because we had the idea, we might have sparked the fellowship, but it's because of you that you struggled through different vocabularies. You struggled through how do we talk to each other and really make a product out of this. And as you are about to see today, the products are amazing. They are awesome. So uh, for my ears, and I'm coming from Western Pennsylvania, we've been endeavoring back in that corner of planet Earth over the past two decades to, to build out a learning landscape where we bring together and ask the how might we questions, Kathy, that you yeah. just described, so that maybe an entrepreneur is working with a museum designer right. and a teacher is working with an artist in new ways to create learning experiences and support human flourishing. And we weren't deliberate and intentional. We didn't know that what we were doing was building out what the world now calls a learning ecosystem. So how much of this has been very deliberate and intentional? And, and what is it that you see this growing into as it moves forward? It's a combination, right? We have yeah. been iterating and changing as we go. But the one thing for sure is that we wanted this to be an exchange, almost like a cultural exchange. And you need infrastructure to do that. <laughs> and we're bringing fellows together. Well, I'll, I'll put some slides on in just a moment to, to tell you a little bit about what you're going to hear in, in, a, in a couple minutes. Um, but it's also been changing over time. And you'll hear more about that as we, as we continue. Yeah. Can I just say one thing, though? I think what was intentional, and we knew it might be something that was challenging, was to pull people together from these different sectors. That was very intentional. What happened to the program as it grew, and I would say flourished, became something where the fellows taught us as much as we taught them. Yeah, yeah. So and let the, oh yes, please, Roberta. And, and we also know, as reflected in the white paper that we wrote, how difficult it is when people first get started on this endeavor. Because everybody has their own jargon and their own vocabulary. So everybody has to explain to each other what they mean, because we all use words differently, like the word process, just for example. So. We have to really thank you guys for sticking with it and working through the challenges of talking to people from diverse areas that you initially know nothing about and then come to really understand and understand how you can harness it for the public good. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> so I'm gonna... I'm going to turn to each of them. So give us a little bit more color, an idea that you want to share, a data point as we ground ourselves in this work, because we're going to see some amazing examples of things done and things yet to be imagined later today. I'm going to let you guys go first, because I'll end it so that we can get to the next the showcase. Well, I think what's most exciting to me about this project is over the course of the last six years, there are now 50 people out there who have been trained to really think cross vocabulary, cross sector, 50 people. Imagine the richness of that as issues come up around children and families in the future. And my prayer for the future is that we can have kind of a rapid response group now that we can create with these 50 people at the core and begin to create concentric circles that can respond quickly to any of the issues that come up with evidence-based smart journalistic tendencies and knowing how to really get to the core as we translate for parents. I, I agree completely. We have developed what we call the learning science mindset, which many in this room now have. That's a big deal because it's the recognition 
that if you have a serious, a wicked problem before you, you cannot solve it unless you bring people in from other sectors. That's a big deal. Yeah. And the fact that there are 50 people in the world now who have this learning science mindset gives us the opportunity to propagate it more widely. And that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to close, maybe help close, because we are so excited to get to the showcase, and yes. I'm getting the stop message from <laughs> <laughs> um, But let's put a couple slides up just behind me here as we're talking, and I think the folks in the studio hopefully can, can hear me. I want to say that for me, one of the, the key things that we have been able to, to see and to show is that relationships matter so much, but that you're not going to, it, it takes time, right? Oh, I think, I think I need to do this. Thank you, Yolda. <laughs> All right, so we um, we have these That's incredible why she's relationships. An yeah, <laughs> <laughs> need y'all that. Uh, 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 incredible relationships that are being built across sectors, and that's what's helping people to be able to talk together across their languages. So, these this photo behind us here and on screen is showing. Um, our, our latest group of 15 fellows and our advisors we met last time in Zurich. Um, and big thanks to the Jacobs Foundation as well for really getting this started. But I also want to say a big thanks to Greg Bear and the Grable Foundation mm -hmm. for helping to take us to the next stage. Yes. So you'll all hear a little bit more about that today. The Remake Learning Network is a key, a key inspiration for this. So what we're going to do next is I just want to show you how the day is going to go, and then I'm going to be turning it over to one of our advisors to get us going. We have a morning showcase where we're going to show you the work of the 15 fellows who have for two years been identifying key and wicked problems in education and coming up with really innovative cross-sector solutions um, and, and just new approaches to, to solving those. Then we'll have some breakout sessions. So for those who are online, this part will not be live streamed. But for those in the room, we're going to be able to move to different conference rooms across New America and talk in more depth about what these incredible groups of fellows have been able to do and where they're going next. Then we'll have lunch. Then we're going to have this incredible keynote conversation between Rosemary Trulio of Sesame Workshop, and who's, who is here already with us somewhere. Thank you so much, Rosemary, for being here. And with Annie Murphy-Paul, who is a senior writer for Hidden Brain and was also a Learning Sciences Exchange fellow um, in a past cohort. And then we're going to have some incredible conversation about the challenges that are before us. And we'll announce our new fellow group. So um, that will be after lunch. Um, we can't wait to have everybody join us for that. So I'm going to now, I think we are ready to um, head. Oh, my gosh, I almost forgot someone else is joining us. Just a little teaser. We might see a red furry friend somewhere around when uh, Rosemary and our Sesame Workshop friends come on stage. So we're going to now turn to um, our, our showcase. And I want to bring Sandy Wax up um, here to the podium. Thank you so much to Sandy. She is one of our advisors, um, works at this intersection of storytelling and children's media. And we will exit stage right. So thank Would you. Would you please thank you, join Greg. me in thanking this panel and thanking our hosts? <laughs>